Hey guys, it's been quite a while since I've made a video about law, career, um, and since I posted my very first video, which was a day in the life of a corporate lawyer, I've gotten so many messages and requests um, just from people asking if I could share my story as to how I went from being a law school grad to a corporate lawyer. So I've put it off for quite a while now, but um, I've gotten a, f a couple more of those requests recently, so I thought that I would make that video for you guys today. Now, I just wanted to start off by saying that this video is not like a guide or tips or advice as to how to become a corporate lawyer. I do have another video, which is the things that I wish I knew in law school to get my dream job, and I'll have that video linked somewhere over here. That video is filled with tips, advice as to um, you know how to score that legal job that you want. Out of law school so if you guys are interested in that go and check it out but this video is really going to be about my story and um, how I got to where I am today okay so if you guys don't know or if you haven't watched my previous law related videos I am a corporate lawyer at a tech company I basically work on all of the company's contracts and I absolutely love my job, but it wasn't the easiest path to get here. And it certainly was not a linear path. Um, I faced a lot of challenges along the way, made a couple of changes before I finally got here. So I graduated from law school almost 10 years ago. And that's so crazy to say because I can't believe I've been practicing law for almost 10 years, but I have. And when I graduated from law school, I moved um, about five, six hours from my law school. So I went to school down in Southern California, and then after I graduated, I came back home to Northern California. I think that was the first most difficult thing that I faced was not having my um, alumni network close to me. I had to utilize other resources around me to find my first job. And um, one of the resources that I utilized was um, like this sister network program that my school had. And so I was able to get access to like the career center for one of the local law schools because they had a relationship with my law school. Through the local law school, I was able to find my first job. And um, my first job was kind of weird. It was, I was an attorney for a like small to mid-sized law firm and um, they were located about two, three hours from where I lived. And they wanted me to help start up um, a branch of their office in the city that I lived in. So um, I practiced family law, bankruptcy, tax, uh, DUI, like just a whole range of um, different areas of law. And I did that for about, I think a year, a year and a half. But because I was trying to jumpstart this on my own, I mean, I would get help from them, but not nearly enough for a new law school grad to really, you know, be able to learn anything in depth. So, um, yeah, I wasn't getting enough clients. He didn't have enough business to give me. So about a year and a half into this, I decided that I was going to start my own firm. And um, I told the law firm that I, that I was going to start my own law firm, that I would be pretty much practicing the same types of law I did with them. And they were very, and they let me start up my own firm and work for them at the same time. So for about three months, I had both my own firm and got my own clients as well as worked for this other firm. It took me about three months to get my own firm really up and running. And then so three months later, I told this firm that I was going to quit. So then I really jumped into, um, you know, this new adventure with my own firm. So I ran my own firm for about five years. Is it five years? I think I can't even really remember at this point, but... I think five or, uh, yeah, like five or six years. And I um, started off really focusing on family law, but that was absolutely not the type of law that I had envisioned for myself when I was in law school. So when I was in law school, I had always wanted to go corporate, go in-house, um, and that's still what I wanted to do. But unfortunately, because my first job out of law school was this um, job doing other sorts of law, that was the only thing I knew how to do. So. Oh, and the other thing was that when I first got out of law school, the economy was really bad at that point. Um, so I just took the first job that came along instead of trying to wait around for the ideal job. But about a year into my law firm and doing family law, I decided that I really didn't want to do family law anymore. And I started to go to a lot of networking events. Um, and at these networking events, I would talk to a lot of corporate lawyers and um, lawyers who were doing things that I wanted to do. And it, I didn't necessarily score any job out of that experience, but 
um, I did meet a lot of lawyers along the way um, who were able to kind of mentor me in the area um, of contracts and you know kind of pass me some side work so that's how I kind of got started in contracts and commercial law. So for the next like three to four years of my law firm, I started working primarily on contracts, so different ty all different types of contracts. But I still wasn't exactly happy because um, running your own law firm is a lot of work. It's, you're working so many hours, but you can probably only bill like a portion of those hours to your clients. So you really put in a lot of time. Not to mention like running your own law firm is, is basically running a business. You know, there's so much to do um, that's not law related. You have to basically do everything business related as well. So it was taking up a lot of time. Um, and then when I had my son, I, that's when I really decided that I wanted to, you know, quit solo practice once and for all. Um, and that's when I started to look for opportunities in-house. Now, I got really, really lucky because right at the point where I was wanting to go in-house, an opportunity came along to me and um, I applied for it and I got the job and then I went in-house. But I will say that near the end of my time of running my own firm, I had already started to apply to in-house positions, um, but it was very difficult. So that's definitely another challenge that I ran into and probably the biggest challenge that um, I've had during my legal career, which is trying to switch from like a uh, solo practice into in-house because the issue is that a lot of companies they're not they're skeptical to hire you if you don't have any actual experience in-house because i think they're just not sure if you um you know are familiar with the way things work in-house as opposed to being like an outside counsel for different companies so that was definitely a major challenge that i had but um you know like i said i think i got really lucky but I think what I think the point that I want to stress here is that yes, I did get lucky, but at the same time, it's not like I didn't have any sort of control or influence in that luck. I think that you can really, you know, accomplish anything you want in this world, but you have to be willing to put yourself out there over and over again and not be afraid of failure. So you can definitely make the switch. It is very difficult, but you need to constantly be going to networking events, you know, putting your, like I said, putting yourself out there, meeting different people, um, volunteering in different activities. The reason why you have to do this is because this way you can expose yourself to the world and let the world know that you're out there, you know, what it is you're looking for, and you'll eventually find someone along the way who's willing to help. But if you don't put yourself out there and you try to do it on your own um, or you just you know, think that it's never going to happen to you, I'll tell you right now, you're never going to get what it is that you want. So it's kind of like a general word of advice. Um, anything that you want, you need to work for it and you have to put yourself out there because there's no other way. So if you find yourself in like an area of law that you don't enjoy right now and you've done it for a few years and you want to make the switch but you're not sure how to, uh, well, you know, obviously, A, you need to get some experience, right? So whether that means learning some things on your own first, you know, finding a mentor, doing some pro bono work on the side, you have to put yourself out there, invest the time, and, you know, start trying to help yourself make that switch. But it can definitely be done. Oh, and the other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys is that it's very, very difficult to find an in-house position right out of law school. So if you're in law school and you know that you definitely want to be in-house counsel, then you want to try to get a job. Um, that either works with contracts, so like a contracts administrator, um, just so you get some experience. Or if you want to be in-house counsel doing some other type of law, for example, like employment law um, or trademarks, then you don't necessarily have to um, you know, try to find like contracts experience. You can go to a firm, do employment, do trademarks, do IP. And then once you have like three years of experience or so, you can make the switch in-house, which is a lot easier. Um, it's just very difficult to make the switch in-house if you are practicing some sort of completely unrelated law like I did. But, um, you know, the switch can definitely be done. I did it. You just have to be persistent. And like I said, you just have to work hard and put yourself out there. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did like it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. I post every single week about fashion, life, luxuries. So um, if you don't wanna miss a video, definitely make sure to subscribe. 
I will also link my blog and my Instagram down in the description box below. On my blog, I have posts about different topics, so like money, travel, um, fashion, lifestyle, and on my Instagram, I post my daily outfits of the day. So definitely check out my Instagram if you wanna get some outfit inspiration. All right, guys, thank you again so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.